Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number six. So I've got a bit of spare time on my hands, and this is being recorded um, like an hour after I recorded episode five. Um, but don't worry, I am going to take a break so that I can get your feedback and stuff from um, the pay-per-view Hostile City Showdown, which we might as well review. Let's take a quick look at it. Uh, Bird January, end of the month. I really like this little calendar thing. We can see literally every company shows um, but here we are boom let's do this view so yeah, here were our matches Joey Munoz Lil Guido uh, got a 71 with Munoz going over we had RVD and Sabu defeat uh, Kida Chihara and Hayabusa 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 whatever you want to say 72 Rhino beat Tommy Dreamer in a 76 which I think was our match of the night nope the Dudley Boys versus the Gangstanate Gangstanators I think I've been adding extra and gangstaninators. It's gang gangstaninators, I think. Um, but unfortunately, New Jack got an injury, which has made me change a lot of plans. Um, and then our main event was Jerry Lynn defeating Taz with the help of all these guys, um, which caused a massive ruckus. And then we had an impromptu main event with the triple threat uh, taking on Taz, Jerry Lynn, and Lance Storm with Taz. Uh, getting the win against Chris Candido, and then Taz attacked Jerry Lynn post-match. Uh, before we dive into these two shows today, which I've had to change one of them because of bloody New Jack, um, is we've got a little bit of news. First thing is FMW have finally got a tag team. It's Gado and uh, Jado. Gado and Jado? Gado and Jado. I always used to say Gado and Jado because it rhymes, but I think it's Gado and Jado, I believe. Um, yeah, I don't really pay attention to when they say the, say Jado's, Jado, Jado's name on New Japan. Um, but he's with, um, G.O.D. at the moment, isn't he? El Fantasmo and Hikaleo. Um, but yeah, this is the other piece of news. OVW have, you know, they've waited four weeks and gone, you know what? Let's take another one of Ted's talents. And this time it is Darren Drozdov, a.k.a. Droz, who, if we look at this table, um, is our one and only enhancement talent. Um, he's not there by choice. Uh, that's just where he was in the game. But to be fair, I did want to start using Droz a little bit. Um, I wasn't exactly going to have him, you know, winning titles or anything, but he's a cool look, a cool character. Um and he's got some pretty, like, okay skills here. This stuff can grow as he gets better. But, um, yeah, he's he's going. Because if we want to sign him on, uh, let me just show you here. I'm going the longest way about this for everyone. Duh, 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 duh. Draws, draws, draws. There we go. Um, it will cost us five and a half grand a month. And draws isn't exactly someone I'm going to be using week in, week out. So I don't really want to be committing to um, a monthly written contract yet with um, with good old Droz. So he's going as well. So that's three um, of our roster who have now gone or going to OVW. So you best believe that Droz is losing uh, in one of these or in this show because he'll be gone by that one. Which kind of makes me think that we need to bring in more wrestlers. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we've got 41 wrestlers, apparently. It doesn't feel like we've got that many, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I might may, I might get that number up to, like, 45, maybe? I don't know. I am going to hold off on signing anyone um, for now. I want to get to Cyberslam, and then I think from there onwards... We've done two months of regular roster, kind of, plus Joey Munoz. Um, and then we're going to start signing and going a little bit more off the wagon but one thing i do want to just quickly run through and i know that most of you guys i'm hoping will leave some comments on who you want to include as a potentially new jack's replacement as spike dudley's partner or, or someone coming in to help spike dudley because i think he needs someone in his corner uh let's just take a look at my shortlist again and let's add a uh, hireable because there's a couple of new people that i found or i, I think might be quite good so the first one was uh, Sid Vicious, 
He's got good intimidation. Uh, his wrestling stats are okay. Um, he might be good for one or two appearances. Nothing crazy. I just figured, you know, big name. Like, whoa, Sid Vicious is here. Might be quite good. Could bring him in as Psycho Sid. I don't know. Uh, that was one option. And then this one was one that I really keen on. Mostly because, look at these numbers, bro. This is this is consistent. And super young. Togi Makabe. Um, I did custom this picture because before it was a 45 year old looking Togi Makabe which makes no sense um but back um in the 90s he was known as Shinji Makabe I believe um so it's tempting to bring him in but he doesn't strike me as someone who would come in to help Spike um so I feel like this might be someone that I sign but probably not as Spike's partner, which then leads me down the rabbit hole of maybe bringing in Ricky Banderas. Um, but is he really a good guy? You know, I'm not too sure. Necro Butch is too young. I kind of want someone who, you know, has got, I mean, actually Ricky's in the exact same boat. I want someone who's got a few years experience. A super crazy has got experience, but he's not exactly a, wow, super crazy is just even the playing field. You know what I mean? Um, we could bring in uh, Big Guido could come in. I don't know. Maybe this, this short list isn't what we want. Let's clear the filters. Um, look for hireable and wrestler. And then we'll sort by maybe star power. We have the refilter because there's a bug going on at the moment. So Ron Killings has the highest star power. Um, he's definitely someone I'll be bringing in eventually. Ultimate Warrior, no, we're okay. Uh, Jeff Hardy, Christopher Daniels, Abyss. Um, he would at least look the part. I might get a different picture though, because that's definitely like 2004 Abyss, not 98 Abyss. Greg Bound, I've never heard of you. Um, I mean, yeah, some of these people, like, come on. Let's bring 15 year old Rocky Romero in. I don't know. Um, yeah, Slim Pickens, eh? Sean Morley. I mean, we can repackage some of these guys. Like, let's bring in Yokozuna. Why not? I mean, the fact that, like, Sean Morley doesn't have to come in as Val Venus. Do you know what I mean? Like, he can come in as, like, maybe someone more serious. Um, isn't Mascara Sagrada, like, tiny? Oh, no, there's a, there is a, a little person version of him. Ekmo. I mean, that's Umaga, right? We could bring him in, package him up as someone else. Test. Um, he's a big guy. He could, he could be, like, Big Spike. I don't know. Spike Senior, we could repackage Tess. I'm tempted to repackage Tess now. He looks like he could be related to Spike. He could be a new Dudley. Oh, I'm tempted. I am tempted. That might be what we see. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I mean Matt Bloom could be someone we bring in. I'm assuming he can tag with Test. Uh yeah, we've got some options. Shark Boy would be pretty fun, I guess. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep scrolling just for a little while. I mean Davy Boy Smith, clean as balls mate um yeah and there's a few other people like dragon kid i want to bring in soon i think him and sima can get on board uh Juve to guerrera someone i'll probably bring in again um isn't he like 12 13 ridiculous yeah so anyways actually i think test is probably the way to go i think that would be good but obviously not as test we might have to where's he gone andrew martin we'll have to repackage him as something other than andrew martin or test um, because he's got pretty good numbers. I'm assuming he's got great potential. He's got really good pop. Man will jump straight into the main event scene, I can imagine. Yeah. Cool. I think this might be where we go. I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll leave it up in the air. There's not going to be any teasing. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for just this opening bit. We lost money last month, so we did reduce our spending. We'll see if that bites us in the arse at the end of the first show. But, um... Yeah, let's not waste any more time and dive straight into our first Hardcore TV episode of today. See you in a sec. Okay, and here we are for the first Hardcore TV episode. But before we dive into anything, we do have the question of the week on the left-hand side. And this is a fun one, I think, because obviously our answers can really, really change the landscape of, you know, wrestling as we know it. But it is, if you could change the outcome of one wrestling match what would it be and why so this could be any match in the history of wrestling what one what match would it be two why would you change it 
and three what do you think that knock-on effect would have been now i feel like i need to really prepare answers before this because i don't actually have one off the top of my head um the first one that screams at me that i remember when i was younger and i was so devastated that well not devastated but i was like nah that's bullshit like i was never an undertaker guy never been a fan of undertaker um i just you know didn't get it like i thought he was cool american badass undertaker from you know attitude era Mwah. love that guy um i feel like i'm in the minority of that but the dead man was never into it he, he's not a great worker he hasn't been for the last like 10 years of his career um and the first wrestlemania that i ever watched live was wrestlemania 21 i think i was like 10 or 11 something like that uh, one of my favorite matches of all time Shawn michaels kurt angle that match was incredible but that's not the match i would change the outcome of the one that i would change the outcome of and i think it would only negatively impact the undertaker's career which i'm fine with is randy orton against the undertaker randy orton was on such a hot streak back then he was the legend killer you know he'd worked his way through a number of uh legends you know defeating them all really building that name and this was when i think randy was on that cusp of being like a mega star and we know that he got there in the end he did you know he, he's done incredible in his career but um that he should randy should have won that match the the spot when um he lifts the undertaker up for the tombstone randy should have hit that obviously the undertaker should have kicked out of it but the rko is such an iconic move and i feel the rko would have been even more iconic if it was like that move that defeated the dead man and defeated and defeated the undertaker um that's my hot take that's the match i'd change just off the top of my head that that would be it um but yeah let's get on with the show what is your uh pick please let me know in the comments i really like reading them and i really like you know starting a dialogue with you guys but we are here at hardcore tv uh we've got three matches on the card tonight which you know isn't much um but we've got a ton of content to to pack in and of course we're kicking off with uh, Droz's goodbye party where Stevie Richards the leader of the blue world order comes out and just super kicks the shit out of Droz uh, Stevie Richards comes out looking amazing in this match gets a plus 0.8 whoa um, 82 from the crowd a two and a half match quality in a 64 overall yep see you later Droz I think this is the final time we see him of course the rest of the BWO are there to support Stevie Richards ringside. And uh, yeah, simple six minute match in and out. Stevie Richards looking baller, nice and strong. Uh, let's move on to the next segment. And this is something I had to change because originally it was going to be New Jack versus Devon Dudley. Um, but instead, Lil Spike has uh, plucked up the courage um, and will be taking on Devon. So, ladies and gentlemen, says Joey Styles. The aftermath of Hostile City Showdown has left us in an aftermath of chaos, and tonight's main event is no exception. Spike is stepping up against his bullies yet again, and this time it will be in singles action against D. Von Dudley. Get ready for a post-showdown showdown that will redefine ECW wrestling, where the war rages on. So Spike, you know, he's seen the efforts that New Jack and John Cronus went into. And, you know, he's like, you know what? I need to fight my own battles. So Spike has set that challenge to Devon. And Devon, still recovering from that match, um, obviously accepts because they see Spike as a very weak individual. So our main event tonight will be Spike Dudley versus Devon Dudley in um, just a straight up street fight, I think. I think it's a street fight, hardcore match or just a regular match. I can't remember. Um, but Joey Styles, of course, confirming that main event. Following on from this, though, and still talking about that match, uh, John Cronus um, has got something to say. Uh, so he's cutting a little cheeky promo himself. And he just says, look, I've got something on my mind. I've been in the trenches with New Jack and I respect the hell out of him. But this war between Spike Dudley and the Dudley boys it is not our fight. I didn't sign up for this chaos. I'm not about to get injured myself. New Jack, my brother, I think it's time we part ways, at least for now. I've got no appetite for a war that's not mine, and I'm walking away from this madness. So it seems like in tonight's main event, Spike Dudley is probably well and truly on his own. Because of course, New Jack is injured, he can't compete. 
um, John Cronus has essentially signed himself out of being involved in this war. So um, poor Spike, I guess. He's going to have to do it alone tonight. And um, that's not me hinting that Test is going to turn up. I guarantee you he's not because um, we haven't signed him yet. Oh. Or have we? Ooh, no, we haven't. Um, but yeah, John Cronus looks like he's parting ways with New Jack and the gang gangstanators are no more and he is no longer involved in this feud. Following on from this though, Joey Styles is talking to Joey Munoz, um, you know, praising him from his debut pay-per-view match, but Munoz has got something that he needs to admit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is Joey Styles here and I've got to give credit where credit is due. Munoz, you delivered an incredible debut pay-per-view match that had this arena on its feet. You've clearly got a bright future here in ECW. Joey Munoz takes the mic from Joey Styles and says, Thanks, Joey. I appreciate the kind words. Now, there is something, though, that I have to admit. Tommy Rich, in all this wildness, said something that did catch me off guard. Turns out, my great aunt that I slapped out of his mouth, she actually is Italian. Tommy may be crazier than a bag of ravioli, but you got but you were spot on there, buddy. But unfortunately for you and the FBI, Tommy Rich, she's only my great aunt through marriage. So there is no Italian blood in Joey Munoz. So call it a coincidence or call it a fact. Tommy Rich might have had it off with Joey Munoz's great aunt, but she is well, no, she is Italian, but Joey Munoz is not. So you know, is this the end of FBI trying to bring him in? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But nice little promo here between uh, Joey and Joey <laughs> on the FBI 74. Nice. We do head back to the ring for our next match. And it is where Tommy Dreamer and Rhino are in the ring with Beulah McGillicutty. And Tommy Dreamer has requested that Rhino comes out. So he says, you know, sometimes in this business, you've got to swallow your pride and admit where you're wrong. I've chosen to be at odds with Rhino, blinded by my own ego. But tonight, I'm standing here looking at a man who's got the same fire in his eyes that I do. Rhino, I was wrong about you. Heyman was right. I've seen the beast within. And you know what? I respect it. So tonight, me and you, we're not just going to coexist. We are going to tear through anyone in our path. And together, we're a new force that's going to shake the foundations of extreme championship wrestling. Welcome to the revolution. Tommy Dreamer extends his hand and Rhino shakes it. So it looks like we've got a new team on our hands. Tommy Dreamer and Rhino. And unfortunately for Just Incredible and Jason, they are up against Tommy Dreamer and Rhino in our next match. And uh, 89 crowd reaction, two and a half star match quality, and a 68 overall. Tommy Dreamer and Rhino get the win. Uh, Just Incredible is apparently a tag team genius, so that helped increase the scores of this one. Thankfully, Credible and Jason didn't drop in pop. I will take that. Beulah's head is tiny. Um, but yeah, Tommy Dreamer and Heyman really helped everyone with this segment, and yeah, great win. Uh, plus 0.5 for these guys, which is really good. So I will more than happily take that uh, so yeah could this be a future tag team champion team i don't know tommy dreamer rhino seems to be a match made in heaven right now so we'll have to wait and see but following on from this the world champion is in the house shane douglas and you know he's got some things to say so let's find out what that is uh shane douglas uh, comes down to the ring. The crowd erupts in a mixture of boos and cheers as our ECW world champion, the franchise, Shane Douglas, strides to the ring with a really nasty-looking black eye thanks to a flying dropkick from uh, Lance Storm at Hostile City Showdown, a testament to the battle that they had um, at that event. Uh, he get, makes to the ring, adjusts his world title as Francine hands him the mic. Well, well... Well, he says, take a good look, everyone. This, my friends, ain't just a black eye. It's a symbol of the relentless war that we wage in this crucible of chaos. Taz, don't get too comfortable with your win because the franchise is not done with you. Not by a long shot. But tonight, 
there's another man who decided to make a statement to discolor the franchise. Lance Storm, you're a talented kid, but you've just signed up for a fight that you can't comprehend. You see this black eye? You are the one that's responsible for it. And Lance, payback is a son of a bitch. You thought Candido was a problem. Well, you're about to learn why crossing the franchise is a one-way ticket to pain. Fran uh, the franchise Shane Douglas then turns to Paul Heyman on commentary and goes, Paulie, make the match. I've got to teach Storm a lesson and maybe return the favour. So Paul Heyman's like, um, okay, well, I guess maybe maybe we do, maybe we don't, I don't know. What? So Shane Douglas just drops the mic in the middle of the ring and makes his way out back. Francine in arm. So yeah, nice little promo there from Shane Douglas. He's obviously not done with Taz, but yeah, he's not happy with the black eye that Lance Storm gave him and wants to, you know, potentially give him a little receipt back. So we'll have to see what Lance Storm says about that and if Paul Heyman decides to book it. But this does take us to our main event of this show. It is Devon Dudley taking on Spike Dudley, who seems to be all on his own. So let's uh, move on and see what happens in this main event match. A uh, 100%... Whoa, hold on a second. Whoa! A 100% rated uh, match from the crowd. A four-star match quality and a 92 a 92 rated match. Devon Dudley, Spike Dudley, an 11 minute match. My goodness. Uh, so Devon, uh, Devon Dudley does get the win in this one, but that's not because, you know, he's amazing in singles action. It's because Bubba Ray had to get involved. Of course he did. Really, you know, tipping the odds in the Dudley boys' favour and Spike, all on his own, just could not compete. But there was a major spot, and of course it was Spike getting double teamed through a table. Uh, the crowd loved it. They were in love with this whole match, and the reaction made it better. Harley Race, being the baller agent that he is, um, did a lot of heavy lifting here. Dudley's, uh, or Devon Dudley, I need to be more specific. Devon's popularity jumped. Thankfully, Spikes didn't drop. Um, and yeah, an awesome, awesome main event. Of course, everyone in the crowd frustrated, booing. The Dudley boys, because, you know, Spike is their little underdog. They want Spike to succeed. And on commentary, Joey Styles confirms a match for our next pay-per-view event. So as the dust kind of settles after the chaos that was Dudley on Dudley action, Joey Styles has handed a note that confirms we will see Spike Dudley take on the Dudley boys once more at ECW Cyberslam. But not just any match. It will be a tables match as they have been so prevalent in this feud. And Spike's not on his own. He is allowed to choose anyone to be his tag team partner as we go into Cyberslam. So who's he going to pick? I guess we'll have to wait and see. And that is how we end this one. So let's see how we did. We would have got an 80 we would have got an 80. Oh, my goodness. Uh, looks like we're still able to grow popularity. So changing that product um, setting is just going to save us 490k a month. So I think I'm happy with that. We'll do that until we get close to 60 pop or until we get close to 55 pop. And then we will um, adjust all of that because hopefully, you know, the more pop, the more people will come buy our tickets. Hopefully more TV deals we can get, etc, etc. Um, but yeah, here is the show. Feel free to read all the segments that we've got. Pause where you want. And uh, yeah, let's jump back to the office and see what went down. If we've got any news, any updates, if, you know, OVW want to steal anyone else from us. We've got two things in the mail. We can see that Drozdov is left ECW and Sean Stasiak has entered the wrestling world. Um, yep, Drozdov has left. Of course, we sold out two and a half thousand. It's annoying that there's not anything between two and a half thousand and five thousand because, like, if there was like a three thousand uh, sized arena, then we could do that. So, Sean Stasiak, let's have a quick look at him, see what his numbers are like. Stasiak, there we go. Brand new, just come into the wrestling world. Not bad here, that's pretty good to be fair. He's got terrible looks and pretty poor star power, but the rest of this is pretty good. 28 pop. Um, if we were to begin negotiations, what would be upper mid, probably? 
Uh, mid card. Okay, nice. Why is that there? We haven't got any other promotions. Um, they'd want 8,000. 250 per appearance. Stasiak could be an option. I'm going to shortlist him. You know, he's new to the world, so he'll take it. He'll take big bumps as well. And he's a slow decliner. I think they're both really good stats to have. Who knows? Could Sean Stasiak be Spike Dudley's partner? We will have to wait and see. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly fast forward to the next show. If anything happens in the meantime, I will come back and let you know. But if not, I will see you guys at the next Hardcore TV episode. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, before we jump into our next Hardcore TV episode, a couple things have happened. So I just thought I'd quickly address them. Um, in the world of, you know, the rest of the world of wrestling, Stevie Ray has left WCW and joined WWF, which is an interesting signing for WWF. Um, I'm not really too sure why, but they probably maybe got big plans. Who knows? Um, if we just jump to our mail section, we've got two news here. So Rico Constantino has entered the world of wrestling. So another person, I've slapped him on my shortlist immediately. He's got really good numbers. Um, he could be a really fun character to have and book. I mean, I can already see him joining the, the, the BWO, even joining FBI, you know, teaming up with Danny Doring and Roadkill. That could be fun. Possibilities are endless. Rico's a crazy character. We can go down the Attitude Era Rico route or we can, you know, change his... We could change the narrative, can't we? Because, you know, Rico's Rico. Uh, Rico can be whatever Rico we want Rico to be. Rico. How many times can you say Rico? Um, and the other thing was a push request from Supernova. He says he thinks he's put in the work and deserves a push. So he would like to receive a push sometime before the 7th of May. Now, I'm not too sure what that means. Does that mean just going down to him and changing his push from mid card to upper mid card? Is that what that means? Or do we basically have to give him like a string of wins or something? Um, I don't know. So I would like it if you guys helped me out and let me know. So I just did a thumbs up gesture, but you probably didn't see it. So yeah, let me know. Um, if it's a matter of just doing this, then I'll do that. Nice and easy. Um, if it's a matter of, you know, trying to push him somehow. We've got until uh, post May, which is do, do, do here. Um, until the 4th, 4th of March. Oh, no, that's contract expiry. Where is he? Uh, May, 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 May. Hold on. Opposites. Yeah, we've got until the 7th of May. So that's until not Cyber Slam, the next pay per view. So we've got time between Cyber Slam and then to push him if that's what that means. So yeah, let me know, please. Uh, but that's it. That's all the, the news that came through. Let's dive straight into Hardcore TV. And here we are for the next Hardcore TV episode. And of course, we're starting with the FBI. Why wouldn't we? Um, remember, if you haven't already, answer the question of the week if you want to. You don't have to, but I'd like it if you did. <laughs> um, and yeah, we start with a nice big old promo ahead of our first match, which will be a six-man tag between the FBI and the BWO. Uh, so the crowd erupts in jeers and shouts of where's my pizza as the FBI struck down to the ring full of confidence and swagger. Tommy Rich grabs the microphone and says, well, 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 look who we got here, boys. The Blue World Order, or as I like to call them, the Blue World Order of Losers. <laughs> the crowd boos as Tommy Rich just soaks looks it all in he's like haha i welcome the booze uh, he then continues and goes supernova the innovator of idiocy what's that your best attempt at being original huh let me tell you something son you're about as innovative as a stale piece of bread and then we got the blue meanie meanie you're so blue you make the sky jealous fat joke get it haha <laughs> i bet your mama cried the first time she saw you and last but not least, we've got Stevie Richards, the man who thinks he's a leader, but couldn't lead a parade of ants to a picnic. Stevie, you're so delusional. I'm surprised you even found your way to the ring every night. Boys, I've seen kindergarten classes with more discipline than the Blue World Order. But tonight, tonight, the full-blooded Italians are going to show you what a real wrestling, what real wrestling, sorry, and discipline is all about 
As Tommy Rich goes to continue his taunts, however, Stevie Richards can't take it anymore. He delivers a thunderous super kick to Tommy Rich, catching him off guard. The crowd explodes with chance of BWO as the referee rings the bell to start this match. So I think Tommy Rich needs to shut his mouth. He keeps getting like, kicked in the head and punched in the face. Um, but yeah, nice little opening promo here. I really like booking the FBI, so I'm going to continue to do so. Uh, but that means we we go straight into our first match, which is a three-on-three. Three. Guido Smothers Rich against Stevie Richards, Blue Meanie, and Supernova. Now, before we dive into this, I have watched, not like loads, but a decent amount of late 90s ECW. I never once saw Tommy Rich actually wrestle but he's listed as a wrestler, so I'm having him wrestle in this match. But please let me know if he's not meant to be wrestling, <laughs> because if he's not, I'll change him into a personality and we'll look to maybe recruit someone for the FBI. Uh, but yeah, let's dive straight into this match. And uh, yeah, oh, we got an 84 from the crowd, two star match quality and a 63 overall. Uh, in a decent match, it is, of course... <gasps> The FBI that get the win. Oh, push Supernova. Fuck off. <laughs> We've got time. Uh, Tommy Rich got a boost because of his gimmick. Love to see that. Um, some popularity drops for Supernova. Oh, we just promised to push. And the following night, we are burying him to the FBI. Um, but yeah, great win here for the FBI. Stevie Rich has helped everyone. Tracy Smothers helped everyone. And yeah, Guido getting a nice win. Let's say he pins Blue Meanie. Um, just to, you know, save face, I guess. Uh, but yeah, fun little match. Nine minutes, in and out. Um, the, the BWO, of course, are going to bounce back at some point, we hope. Um, but yeah, I think the FBI, they've done some really good promo work recently. Um, so I think it's, you know, just worth him getting a, um, a push, I guess. Or just a win. Following on from this, though, Lance Storm is responding to Shane Douglas's comments and challenge, I guess, uh, over the last few, uh, or over the last week. Uh, so Joey Styles is on hand, about to speak with Lance Storm uh, on his response to Douglas's words last week. So it seems that our ECW champion has been running his mouth again. This is Lance Storm speaking, sorry. Uh, he's threatened to teach me a lesson as if he's some kind of professor in the ring. Now I'm not one to back down from a fight, so Shane, I'm more than happy to oblige. But here's the thing, Shane. If you're so confident that you can teach me a lesson, how about we make things a little more interesting? How about you put that ECW World Heavyweight Championship on the line when me and you step in the ring? If you're truly the franchise, you should have no problem defending that title against me. Suddenly, though, the human suplex machine Taz storms into frame, snatching the mic from Storm and Styles. Lance, Lance, Lance. The only lesson Shane's good at is running his mouth. And trust me when I say this, I want nothing more than to see Douglas's ass handed to him. But it ain't going to come from you, buddy. It's going to come from me. So step aside. This is personal between me and Douglas. I deserve that title around his waist. And I want the satisfaction of ripping it away from him. Taz then turns to the camera and steps forward a few paces, you know, so it's just him. He says, Shane, I hope you're watching as I'm the man who's going to put an end to your reign. And Lance, you're more than welcome to watch from the sidelines as I dismantle the so-called franchise. He, Taz then looks back at Storm, who kind of smirks at him, seemingly unfazed by uh, Taz's interruption. Um, and that is how this promo ends. So it seems like, you know, Storm is happy to face Shane Douglas but he wants a title match um if he is going to face him and then Taz of course not happy about that Taz is like whoa 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 buddy don't try and walk into the world title scene um because Taz believes that he's the rightful contender for that world title so we are just going to have to wait and see what happens here but yeah nice little promo good work from Joey Styles and everyone involved let's move on and move on we do to a simple one-on-one -on -one match it's Mikey Whipwreck taking on Bobby Duncan Jr. And Mikey Whiprep gets the win. A very straightforward 10-minute match. Uh, Mikey gets the win, so he gets a plus 0.4. Bobby Duncan goes down. Bobby Duncan, I don't really know anything about him, so he's probably going to be one of our resident jobbers. Uh, but a 74 crowd reaction. Two-star match quality, 65, and a 59 overall. So, yeah, not the best. Um, one thing I don't like too much about PWS 
and I hope they change it soon, even if we just like hover over one of these and we get a bit more information, is like, for example, this was a 59, which isn't very good in my eyes, but like, why was it a 59? Uh, is it because Mikey's not that good? Is it because Bobby's not that good? Maybe like if there was an individual performance score as well, like that would be nice. Just wondering. Um, but yeah, let's move on. Just a simple match, nothing to add to this. Uh, but we do have a backstage promo between the Pitbulls, and you can tell what they're talking about. Uh, the Pitbulls are standing in a dimly lit locker room as the camera slowly zooms towards Pitbull Gary Wolf. Candido, Storm, listen up. We've had enough of your drama with those tag belts. You two can't get on the same page, and it's making a mockery of this tag team division. The camera then sways towards Pitbull Anthony Durante. We ain't here for a soap opera. We're here to fight and become the next tag team champions. So it's time to get serious. Put those titles on the line against the Pitbulls. The camera then zooms in on them both as Gary Wolf, Gary Wolf sorry, points to the camera. We don't care when, we don't care where, as long as those belts end up around our waist. Accept the challenge or keep playing dress up with those titles because the Pitbulls are coming for them and there ain't no stopping us. The, the Pitbulls then eerily walk off into the darkness of the gritty backstage locker room. So yeah, the Pitbulls feel like Lance Storm and Candido are making a mockery of the tag division and they want those belts. Are they going to get a match or are they going to have to earn it? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but following on from this is now our main event. And uh, yeah, it's someone we haven't seen in the series yet. Um, but he is, of course, an ECW legend. So let's move straight into our main event match. But beforehand, of course, we've got a promo. And it is the Sandman. He has returned from a little holiday that he had. So the Sandman strides into the ring, kendo stick in hand, with the crowd erupting with ECW chance he takes a little swig of his beer before being handed the mic ahead of his main event match and he goes it's been a minute the sandman took a little vacation enjoyed some cold ones but guess what i miss this and i missed you guys the crowd then roars with louder ecw and sandman chants i miss the extreme the craziness the fights so here's the deal the sandman's back and i'm here to take ECW to a whole new level of extreme. But that ain't all. I've been ECW world champion four times. But that's such an ugly number. Five sounds so much better. And that's exactly what I'm aiming for. He then twirls his kendo stick and begins to grin as the crowd continue chanting his name and ECW's. So Shane, Taz, Dreamer, Hell, even Blue Meanie. Whoever's holding that gold when the Sandman comes around, be ready. I'll make your final moments extreme, bloody, and unforgettable. There's only one who takes it to the limit and defines extreme, and that's the Sandman. He raises his kendo stick in the air, and the crowd explodes and smashes the empty can of beer onto his forehead as he prepares for his main event match tonight against a good friend of his. So hopefully... It'll be a nice, respectful main event match. And it is against Two Cold Scorpio. And uh, yeah, we tried to steal the show. I can see it didn't get there. Uh, so I'm assuming the Sandman's not the best in the ring. Oh, a one and a half. Just saw the one and a half star. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so in this 14 minute match, the Sandman was struggling for breath by the end. But he did get the win in the end. So keep in mind. Don't put Sandman in a steal the show and don't put him in a match longer than 14 minutes. Um, but he did get the win, an 88 crowd reaction. Thankfully, they were a little bit happier than the actual quality, which was a 62. Uh, the final score being a 64. But the Sandman gets the win and it, I guess continues or starts his charge for that fifth ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Um, and that is how we end this one. Probably not going to be the highest rate, a 63. Not too bad. We still grow. As long as we're above a 55, it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, but yeah, I'm just going to quickly scroll through this. Feel free to pause, as we always do. And uh, yeah, let's head back to the office to see if we got any notifications. We'll get the, the standard uh, mail. Yeah. 
So Steve Blackman is up for renewal. Shall we see if we can try and steal him away? I wonder how much Steve Blackman would cost. Let's actually take a look. So yeah. Oh, we actually had a lower. I think this is the first time we haven't had 2,500. Uh, but Blackman. Steve Blackman. Begin negotiations. Uh, 25,000. Nope. Because uh, obviously they'll come back with a higher uh, offer and we don't really want that, do we? So yeah, let's just jump back to the office and just stay stay here, you know, where, where we feel comfortable. Uh, but that is it for this one. We've got our first Cyber Slam match confirmed. It was Spike Dudley and a partner of his choice against the Dudley boys in a tables match. Um, over the next two episodes, we're going to get a bunch more confirmed. I'm assuming Douglas will have a world title match against Lance Storm, Taz, someone. I don't know. Uh, but you're going to have to tune into the next one to find out that and so much more. Um, but yeah, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see each and every one of you in the next one.